Hi, my name is Jurgen and I love open source. Today I'm going to talk to you about Inkscape and how it works with fill and stroke. So fill and stroke is one of the most elementary properties that you, you work with if you use Inkscape. So every shape you make, every path you set out, so has a certain shape. And this is def defined by the borders. And these have a certain stroke and the inside has a certain fill. So in this case, we have a blue fill. If we zoom in, we have a thin black stroke. So uh, if you don't have this set up here, if you, so here you, by default, you have in the left corner, in the bottom, an overview of these properties. So you can change the color if you say, I want it red or yellow or orange. So you can set the, the color of your shape and you can set the color of your stroke by using the shift button. If you shift and use a color, you change the stroke color you see. Not, not the best combination here, so I'm gonna change this. So now I have like a fill and a stroke I like. These, you, you can also change them here. And then if you click on them, the fill and stroke menu appears. I'm gonna wait with that for a moment. You can also change the opacity. So now the opacity is set to zero, actually to 100. And if you scroll down, it becomes more transparent. This can be nice um, if you want to use things that, that are on top of each other. Um, so I already told you, if you click here, you get this nice menu. And here you can set the fill, the stroke paint, and the stroke style. Um, let's start off first with fill. Uh, fill, you can, you can have something with no fill. Uh, a flat color. Um, you have a linear gradient. So what's a gradient? This is something that goes from one color to another. Not going, not, not going in too much detail, but if you click on these nodes, you can change one color. You can change the second color if you want. If you click somewhere in the middle, you get, if you use the node tool, and you click here somewhere in the middle, you, you get additional points. This way you, you could say decide to to move around a center and make it really short or make it really long. Or you could even add different colors. And enough said about gradients. So you have linear and you have um, circular gradients. The difference is, so that is like more radial a circle. You can set it as you want. Finished for here. Then you, you can have a pattern. Uh, a mesh gradient. Mesh gradients are really advanced and uh, a topic on their on their own. Um, most the most important part is you have to use the mesh tool. It isn't always enabled by default, but if you go Shift Control M, you you can enable it, and then you could add some uh, relief, and you can add add some in between uh, lines, causing the, the mesh to be more dynamic. So, and every point that you have here, you could you could give it a different color. For example, oh, this is like a mesh is is pretty advanced. Um, this is going to be a topic of its own. Let's go back to our different. So, I'm going to back to the fill now. Um, so, you could also give it a pattern. Pattern is just black and white or black and gray. It's uh, pretty uh, straightforward. Watch out, the, the white isn't actually white, the white is transparent. So you have transparent and color, and you can have different patterns. You also have things that are white and transparent. So in this case, you can't see it unless you put something behind it. So let's go back to this shape. See, like this, you can have different patterns. Let's get rid of. Let's uh, go back to a, f a fill now. Get rid of the, the bigger one. Same way, you can change the stroke. The stroke has all the same properties. So it means let's make the stroke a little bit thicker. For example, if you make it uh, five millimeters, you can. You will see if I give the stroke a gradient, it will also come from visible to invisible or from red to green or whatever you want to do with it. Um, so it just has the same properties here. 
There's one I didn't touch. The last one here, swatch. A swatch, this means you, you, you can add a, a collection of colors that you repeat, for example, if you have like a house style or um, a branding. So you say, so I added this orange and I call it uh, brand orange. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna give this a different color. I'm gonna also add it to the swatch, swatch and I call it brand red. Of course, you could also say skin and clothing and shoes. Um, and now I'm going to duplicate this one. And duplicate it again. And duplicate this one. So imagine this is my, not so very aesthetic, this is my logo. And now I come to the conclusion that this orange isn't really the orange I like. So then I, I, I'm going to tweak it. And as you see, all the colors, all the items with the same swatch fill will change along. This way, it's really easy to keep, to stay consistent in your colors. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's uh, pretty advanced. I don't, didn't find much documentation about this. And there are some, some glitches there. Now, one last thing. Um, this just means inherited. I never used it. Um, you can decide what happens with overlap. So if you combine two objects, let's see, I'm going to combine these two. So now it gets a certain fill, a certain um, stroke. And this means that the, the holes will be empty or the holes will be filled. As you see, the stroke just goes along. But the fill, you can decide here what has to happen with it. This can make a big difference for your picture, of course. Um, stroke paint, same thing, I already told this. And the stroke style, here you can, so I already touched this for a brief moment. You can set the width to, to whatever you want. You can change how it's, how the dashes are. I'll leave it like this because this is really interesting view. So you can make like uh, all kinds of stuff. For now, I'll just give, keep something that's a bit wide. And you, you can decide what markers look like. Markers are not very interesting on closed shapes, but are quite interesting if you have like, for example, I'm going to draw we always get I'm going to draw a thick shape here. Um, so I'm going to give it some dashes too, just for the fun of it. And I'm going to give it a marker, for example, an arrow. So as you see, it just follows the line and it, it, it will draw an arrow. In the, the middle point, you can say I'm going to draw a dot. And at the end, I also want a line or an arrow. You have a lot of features. So you can also have like, um, yeah, just look at them. They're very, uh, very different. So, and the dots actually come on every, every node that you draw. Um, that's for as far as I will go on these markers. I let's undo this for just, just one second. I don't use them that often. Why? I'll, I'll show you because if you give them a certain color, oh, now they changed. This is an upgrade. In the past, they just remained black. What happened if you, if you give them like a, a gradient stroke? They ignore. They they don't really respect what what you do with with your uh, stroke paint. So in this case. You see, the colors just remain the same. Up to that point, if you say, I'm going to change colors, really fishy things happen. It's unpredictable, and it's a bit difficult to know wh where you'll end up. So that's why I prefer to, to draw my arrows myself. Okay, 
So the stroke style, let's say clicker our toy here. Um, I'm gonna make this right, make this one straight again. And I'm gonna draw just one more thing here to make it clear. Okay, so I have this shape here, and now you, 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 you can decide how you will work on the angles and, and, and the outer ends. So for example, if you click on the join rounded, so you, you see this corner became rounded, uh, actually all of them became rounded. You can have them, uh, how it's called, so it's called beveled, so you have like an angle, if you look, zoom in here, you see it has like a small angle. I have, have them um, mitered. The cap, the end point, can be, it can stop just with, with, with the dot. It can create a small round around it, or it can create a square shape where this is actually the middle of the square. This can make quite a difference. Let's see here. In this case, it um, it doesn't change it that much. But you see, depending on this angle, it say it, it you can also say how long can the mitre. So this piece here, how long can it be? I can put a maximum on it or or not, and then it will decide not to create a mitre. So this can be quite important for the, the outcome of your shape. And now. If you have, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this one for now, because now we're going back to our, what's happening here? Okay. What happens with the order? You have this fill, and then you have this, um, the stroke. And the stroke, in this case, by default, it just goes on top of it, and it stays in the middle. So, and what happens with the shapes that I, I might even might might put on top of this, for example, if I put uh, So these we already know, so it, it influences the, the corners here. I prefer sharp angles. Sometimes I prefer rounded angles. Anyway, um, you can say what happens now. So fill stroke markers, what's the order? So if I click this one, the markers will be on top, the stroke in the middle and the fill at the back. I, I want the stroke the stroke to be behind the fill and I want the markers to even be in, in, in the back. Uh, you have like all these kinds of orders between the, the different elements. So just have a look at it, play with it, and you'll see it's uh, pretty powerful. So finally, you have two, two properties that will apply to the whole of uh, an object. So you, you can make it blurry. But as you see here, it gets blurry very quickly. So I tend to always use these small values, one, a half, even 0 0.2, and this sometimes gives a nice soft edge. Um, and opacity is just if you want to change the whole. Um, opacity can also be applied to grouped elements. So if I group all these, so I can change the opacity of the of of, of for example a logo. Um, and it won't affect the opacity of the elements inside of it. 
So that's it, fill and stroke. It's, it's very powerful. It allows you to create the most fun things. So now lesson two is, is, is over. Now we know everything about layers, about paths and objects. That was course one. And now today about fills and strokes. And if you uh, enjoy these, these sessions, please don't forget to press the subscribe button and you'll be notified if course number three comes out. This should be next week. Have fun. See you around. Bye.